Welcome back to the Value Investors Club. I'm your host, Simon von Nordich. Let's get right into it with a VIC readings, the form where we look at the best of the best value investment recommendations by the best of the best value investors out there. Today, we have Archer, author, J. Gallagher, insurance, ticker is AJG. Price of the point of falling is $188. Um, this is not recommendation, not advice. Please do your own diligence before investing into anything. Let's get right into it. Let's first look at... Um, the financials, the numbers, um, it has a market cap of 40, at this point of making the video, of 42 billion, um, around a $200 price uh, tag uh, for each stock and enterprise value of um, 48. So higher enterprise value than market cap. Um, it is usual, but other, uh, the other way around would be better, of course. Uh, a PE of 37 or almost 38 and a PB of uh, 4.5. Uh, gross margin, 41. That's uh, for, or 42 almost. Um, that's not bad, but it says here for the industry, it is average. And a net margin of 13. That also sounds quite all right. Uh, RIC of 7. That is, I mean, that's not that high. They say for the industry it is, but in general, that's not that high. Uh, we'd like to uh, usually we'd like to see at least 15 and um, interest coverage is 6.4. That's also not that high. So they might get a, I mean, it's not low either. So I don't I you can't really tell if they are, won't be able to pay their uh, pay, pay the bills, pay their debt. But um, I'd say it's it's not likely um, that they are not able to do it. Obviously, EV2 FCF 24.81. And whoops, uh, I don't like you ads. Um, let's take a look. Uh, okay, we got a great revenue growth, uh, we got great net income growth. It looks like a typical compounder, it looks really great every year. Um, operating cash flow, free cash flow, net income, revenue, everything goes up every single year. Uh, and it looks like a, um, yeah, a, a graph that we like to see. Um, but they have a lot of debt in comparison to cash. They got 342 million in cash, 6,415 in debt. How much equity do they have? 9,144. So at least they have more equity than debt. Um, otherwise this would already be out of my, um, of my investment ideas. Um, so they have negative share buyback ratio. So they're diluting um, stockholders by uh, not uh, every year around two, which is probably stock um, compensation for employees, uh, stock-based compensation. But in some years, like uh, 2021, they had all, uh, six, 7 7.6, which is not so little. Um, but... There again, we see the curve uh, in equity and assets. Uh, they're growing like crazy. Um, we got, got a nice compounder going, so it seems. So let's dig into the qualitative side. Let's see what they're saying, why this is a great company. And will remain one, hopefully. Um, author, Jay Gallagher and co. Oh, did I say this is not a recommendation, not advice? Please do your own diligence before investing into anything. Now let's get right into it. With the qualitative side, author Jay Gallagher and co. AGJ is poised for an outstanding 2023. Industry conditions are favorable and AGJ likely should lead the group with both organic growth and acquired revenue. The insurance brokerage industry is concentrated 60% among the top four players and AGJ has a 10% share. A stable, competitive environment and mostly recurring revenue uh, make for a high-quality industry. Founded in 1927, Gallagher has preserved its founding culture even at a $40 billion market cap. Members of the family active in management own $350 million of the stock. Gallagher is 87% brokerage and 30% risk management with a presence in 130 countries. Brokerage is 63% domestic and 37% international. 
Brokerage revenues are 52% property and casualty, uh, casualty, 21% employee benefits, 15% wholesale, and 12% reinsurance. Risk management is mostly helping Fortune 1000 companies and carriers reduce workers' compensation losses. The U.S. insurance brokerage industry is firmly in a hot market and Gallagher is especially advantageous. Advantaged. AGJ 2023 revenue will reset meaningfully higher given its 78% commission based. Insurance policies are set to broadly cost 10% plus more in 2023, a big boost to AGJ commissions. Renewal and pricing, the sum of exposure changes and rate increases. Insurance exposes, uh, exposures were largely flat pre COVID and decreased during the pandemic. Starting in 2022, expo exposures increased at a mid-single-digit rate, dri drive driven by price inflation. Sorry for stumbling over words. Uh, 2023 exposure will also be driven higher by inflation, even as inflation wanes as a disproportionate portion of the year's renewals occurred in January. Gallagher's January renewals were up more than 10% in price. Insurance rate increases, uh, particularly in property markets, will be elevated this year. After more than $100 billion in property losses each of the past two years, reinsurance rates have risen. This is in turn has primary property insur insurers citing catastrophe rate increases for 2023 in the 10% to 40% range. Travelers recently said it's hard to characterize this pricing environment as anything other than very strong. Incredibly stable and near record levels. The breadth of the pricing gains across our book is very strong and very consistent. Gallagher recently said it thinks uh, the property market it could get a lot firmer. Willis expects between 0 and 10% price increases in the following major lines. General liability, auto, umbrella high hazard, and excess high hazard. There's room to run as insurance rates only recently started to recover from a major soft market and period of stagnation, have not kept up with inflation. Historically, accredited M&A has been a revenue driver for Gallagher. However, during the past several years, private equity, PE, paid up and pushed aside publicly traded brokers. PE has aggressively rolled up the brokerage industry during uh, two-thirds of all the 800-plus deals in 2022. M&A conditions have now changed in favor of Gallagher. Leverage ratios for each of the insurance brokers backed by private equity have reached 7x to 8x versus AGJ at 2.1x. Four private equity-backed brokers issued debt last fall at an interest rate cost of around 10%. Sulfur plus 3.75% uh, to 5.75%. This now high cost of capital means acquisitions no longer make sense for private equity. It may, prove, it may prove propitious that Gallagher was less active acquiring the past few years. Multiples paid for acquisitions with $10 million plus in revenue increased from below 12x EBITDA in 2019 and years prior to 14x EBITDA the past two years. Acquisitions multiples, acquisition multiples should recede in 2023, given higher borrowing costs and less PE competition. Gallagher expects to pay 10x to 11x forward adjusted EBITDA for acquisitions this year. Gallagher on its January call said, We feel very good about our acquisition pipeline right now. I think it's going to be pretty strong in the first couple of quarters uh, of the year. Gallagher did four deals in January, the most of any public peer. The company has $3 billion of cash dedicated to 2023 acquisitions, including $700 million for HR-EB specialist Buck. The remaining $2.7 billion should bring in $900 million in revenue. Buck, AGJ's second largest acquisition, will help make the business more digital given its propriety software for benefits administ administration. Gallagher has delivered industry-leading organic growth through multiple insurance market cycles. The company led peers with 9.7% organic growth in 2022 and with 11% growth in Q4. Public peers have guided to mid-single-digit or better organic, gro organic growth for 2023, while AGJ expects 7% to 9%. 
Gallagher has continually improved efficiency and margins using its increasing scale as leverage with carriers. The business is inherently highly cash generative, creating a virtuous cycle of plowing organic growth into acquisitions. CFO has grown steadily and CapEx is minimal. Gallagher trades at 21x uh, consensus 2023 EPS, which is in line with the stock's 10-year average PE. Pierce, Aeon, March and Magalinen, and Brown and Brown traded 21, 22, and 23x EPS. As the year progresses and Gallagher deploys its $3 billion in cash to acquire $900 million in revenue while growing 9% organically, adjusted EPS may reach $10. This above peer growth, along with a continued uptrend in margins, argue for a top of peer PE of 23 and a 20% uh, plus investment return. Of the multiple doesn't expand, you own a high quality business with both cyclical and secular tailwinds. Catalysts, organic growth in a hard insurance market and the return of acquisition driven growth. Thank you very much for tuning in. See you next time. Please write down in the comments below what you think of this idea and this company. Will you invest? Won't you invest? Have you invested? Um, I'm actually interested in that. This looks like an interesting company, even though I don't know enough about insurance. I think it is something I could figure out, but I don't think it's that hard. But um, I don't really like when they don't have that much. Organ I mean, they have a lot of organic growth, he said, right? They said He said 10%, 9% organic, uh, organic growth. That's great. That's good. I take that. And then... They it seems like they have made good acquisitions. Normally, I don't really like acquisition companies who are just growing through acquisitions, but they are not just growing through acquisition, and it seems like they've been doing good with it. But it's hard for me to really understand whether acqu acquisitions were sometimes the right ones. I mean, with this company, it's, it seems like it's something different because you can clearly see um, the RIC, but. Sometimes there are strategic ideas behind it, and then it's hard for me to find them. Let's see. Please write down what you think. Please write down if you have an idea how to help me with M&A, uh, to think about it, or acquisitions especially. See you next time.